Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us. We're looking at the Constitution again. Why? Because it matters. And also we want to sort of get over the simplification of it because I think people have got a little bit confused about how to handle it, what to do with it and why can't we just hold a bit in our hand and show it to every policeman or every government official and say, look, according to the Constitution, these are my rights. I've brought back William Keat to go through all of this and more. So, William, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, Richard. Good, good to be back on. It's good to have you. Now, you're in a different environment. So, I've, first of all, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you look like <laughs> you're... It, are you in your camper van? I'm in... Uh, yes, I'm in my, in my caravan in the field. In the field. So, uh, working in the field today. So, Excellent. Um, well, that's, that's, yes. good to, that's good to see. Out, out and about, been giving a few talks and things like that. So, uh, yeah. Well, you've good. become very popular, haven't you? I mean, I know not because of this, but with the appearance on GB News, there's a lot of interesting feedback getting out and about, and a lot of people interested, uh, but also a lot of confusion about, um, still, about the Constitution. Some people wanting to get into the minutiae of, you know, who said what at any one time. We did a bit of that last time. I think yeah. this time we want to think a bit bigger. Yes. So, t so tell me what you mean when you say we need to think big. Yeah, so more, more general, because I don't hmm. think anybody's claiming, and I'm certainly not claiming, that, um, that, that if, if we were to sort of re-establish um, the Constitution and everything that's in the Constitution... Uh, into our society that would take us back to um, medieval England <laughs> so, or, or everything in the Magna Carta it certainly wouldn't and that's not the point right yeah because actually if you think about it it's not you know yes I'm saying essentially that Magna Carta is our constitution or it contains our our constitution um, but actually it's really quite a small bit of it it's you know it's article 39 article 40 article 61 it's just a few bits really that are the are the sort of central elements of our constitution and it's a bunch of principles that's really all it is it's a bunch of principles that the people are in charge over their administrative government and there's meant to be a head of state who's who's a, a wise elder essentially that's all it is right um right. so you've got the tribunal of the people that function under natural law to decide what is what our liberties are and what's what's principled in in our society and what we what we want, we want morally um, in our community. Nice and easy. Yeah. And then you've got this head of state who really is just a, a wise elder. That's essentially all it is. And then the other thing that you could have in the Constitution operating is some kind of legislature where your administrative government is putting in place some statutes which really act as nothing more than flagging up exercises. You know, they can't punish themselves. They don't have the power to punish themselves. They just have the power to flag up something and bring that defendant before the court because you've reached a, a standard where we're a bit worried, you know, that kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes. And, and that's really all it is. That, that's all the Constitution is. It's a set of principles, actually. It's not something set in stone. It's not, not a rigorous thing. Right. Um, so yeah. so, so it's, it's, it is a lot about having a much smaller government than the ever increasing government where we've got a rule for, you know, crossing the road, a rule for opening your mouth, a rule for this, that and the other. You know, it's almost like everything yes. is now and and quite a penalising situation that we have where everything you're fined for this and you're fined for that. And and it doesn't seem to be on your side, whereas what what you're saying from the moral point of view and the principle of just getting on and living seems to be that it's actually in our all in our interest rather than trying to continually extract money which is what's going on at the moment absolutely correct you're spot on it, it is it's about the, running the minutiae of our lives and interfering in in those day-to-day -day things and that's not the purpose of government you know government is really there purely to uh to to check you know, or, or not to check, but to, to, to keep the things that we want in place. Yes. Yeah. So to make sure that, I mean, they can be the enforcement arm, but they're enforcing what the jury decide. So that's all it is. So how it's, would that work nothing with, more than that. How would that work with the police then? Um, because you think the police are quite authoritarian at the moment. They And they're walking around with all their tools and stuff, and they're quite imposing. Um, yes. But... 
and so you feel, you know, that they're they're watching you. They've got cameras on now, and they're recording everything. I know that people then combat that by also filming them, so they've got a record of what's going on. But it doesn't feel a very friendly situation. Not like back in the day when Dixon of Doc Green was on, and you had the Bobby on the beat that would help you across the road, and you had those, you know, if you want to know the time, ask a policeman. That sort of more friendly. Uh, yes, uh, off at constable, I suppose. Now they seem to be police yeah. officers, and uh, yes, there's a, there seems to be a huge difference. So, how, 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 with the constitution in place, how would that work by policing? Yeah, so the police and the police training um, certainly reflected that and used to, and I, I think things have changed a bit more recently. But the police training was always about um, the Peel's Nine principle, um, all, all of those principles. Um, which was very much about in alignment with, with exactly what you've just explained, that the police are the people mm. and the people are the police. And and the reason for that is because in a in a in a in a conscious society, um, really, we are meant to be policing ourselves. You know, it, that is, it's not about the, the framework of you should do this or you shouldn't do that. It's actually about you thinking all the time, consciously all the time about what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing or whether it's okay or safe yes. or whether it's fair to be doing that thing you know and are we doing that all the time and we're not doing that all the time now precisely no. because the statute law is is created as a framework to kind of um cause us to forget to do it you know we do you know what i mean it's it's yes. like a safety net that we don't have to do that anymore we don't have to think for ourselves anymore because the framework of what is acceptable in society is kind of decided for us it's turned us um, into, into a bit of a nanny state with where the government you know we're almost automatically saying about anything oh the government should sort this out or there's this problem or it's down to the council they've got to do deal with it and we yes. we almost have just negated everything to somebody yes. else yeah. Instead and actually, of... and it's that phrase that people often come, oh, there should be a law against that. You know, <laughs> right. when, they see, yeah. when they see a behaviour of somebody else doing something that they don't like, that actually, you know, um, isn't really causing them any harm. It's just, you know, th they just have um, a, cer a certain aversion to something, you know. Well, right. there should be a law against that. Well, that that's where that's coming from. Yes. You know, we, we, to some extent, have driven that ourselves. So yeah. that we should, in theory, be able to do the reverse and pull back those laws from, you know, to, to change. If we're if we're in charge and the government have basically said, look, it looks like they want us to do everything for them. And they've just pounced on it because it gives them authority, something to um, something to do um, and legitimizes their existence, I suppose, in some sense. Whereas yes. if we're able to say, actually, do you know what? We don't need you to do all of those things yes. anymore. It, it quite, you know, we need you to do some stuff, obviously, but we don't need you to be quite so aggressive and do everything. And so it's it's um, it's that sort of a, a process of mind that we, the people, have got <coughs> to get back to of we can deal with so much more. Yes. And, and that's that at a practical level, that's not going to change until our mindset changes first yes. because if that if that becomes the nature of the conversation and the concern in society generally then it will happen naturally and a lot of the stuff that we're not liking and this sort of prescriptive um sort of um, legislation about pre it's all pre-crime in, in many ways predicting certain behaviors and putting it into an a kind of matrix um everything gets kind of like categorized it's about it's like a computer program Yes. Everything is going in that direction. It's all becoming algorithmic, you know, and um, and it's not about that. It's actually meant to be about organic intent. It's about the human being and what is their intent behind something at the level of principle. Um, and, and, and that's the problem. And so in order to get it back to that, we've got to change our own mindset first. Yes. And, and that will happen. And that's why I keep going on about how look, you're not going to get immediate results, really, probably. No. Yes. I'm not saying that you might not. And there are certain things that, you know, you you I mean, obviously, we've got to talk about this loudly. And now that you know about it, 
how can you not talk about it, you know, with your public servants? And Yes, um, absolutely. So when things like elections come up for another government, if people are sort of saying to the government or when somebody's knocking on your door saying, will you support us? And you're saying, well, actually, we would like to have a bit more control. You, you, your party wants to do this and, you know, it's laudable, but maybe we could sort that out ourselves a bit better, uh, take away some of those things and actually have a smaller government. Yes, I mean, may, maybe ask them rather than worrying about these, 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 this sort of minutiae and all of this detail, you know. And and yes, I I agree with a lot of those things. Sounds really good, but it's not really your business to be putting that in place anyway. What you should be doing is actually putting forward some some pa- perhaps some policies about returning the law system to its constitutional principles. Maybe that would be in your manifesto. <laughs> maybe educating Parliament from within. Mm. Might, might be quite a useful thing for you to do and put in, into your manifesto. I, I doubt they will, but... No, I was going to say, be interested to see their faces sort of gloss over as they go, oh, my God, we've got to write one here. <laughs> um, so in terms yeah. of things like, uh, let's talk about, say, education then, because we have um, a bit of a crisis with the schools, I think, at the moment. From I did a video the other day about uh, our schools fit for purpose, and I was a bit nervous about that because I thought I'd be inundated with teachers having a go at me. Um, but actually, I got a lot of response from people saying that they thought it was going down a very dark route, Yes. Um, in the way that children are being educated. And uh, so I'm going to follow that up with some other interviews now uh, coming forward. But in a world where we've got the Constitution a little bit more to how it should be, how would education look, do you think? Yeah, it's very in- in- interesting. And, and and I was a teacher myself. So, um, you know, remember remember back to the days when I was in the classroom. I loved it. It was great. And uh, But, you know, I was lucky because I had relative freedom because I was in an education system that allowed me to do that to, to largely to a greater extent. I mm. actually think that the independent system um, that, that I taught in actually is just as captured now as the maintained sector anyway. Um, but I don't I, I don't know. And I haven't been in education for quite a long time. But I sympathize with the teachers that are in that system massively at the moment. And I would suspect, Richard, that you're right, that many teachers would support you in this, too. They know mm. perfectly well that things are not not healthy. You know, it's not their fault, largely, although no. you know, it's just incrementally going along with this stuff is, is, a, is, is a problem and w- essentially would support it. So where would it be under constitutional law? Um, because the government is much smaller and it's not involving itself in providing services. That's what it, sh- it shouldn't be doing that. Right. You, know, you wouldn't have you probably wouldn't have an education system provided for by government because the whole you've got to think bigger. Yeah. Everything would be very different anyway. I think there would be much more abundance, by the way, anyway. Yeah, because we're not going to be taxed as much because government itself wouldn't be bigger anyway, which then provides its justification for taxing you. There's this yes. kind of cyclic thing. Yes, of course. So there are massive inefficiencies built into a central government providing this, these kinds of services. You know, and I know that the NH- the NHS would be the same. And I know it's a bit of a religion for people, but... You know, I mean, I'm afraid I've, I'm of the opinion, actually, that it shouldn't be there. Because actually, when you think about it, what you're doing is you're coercing people into paying for something, whether they have those services or not. And that's not an anarchist like society. Yeah, everybody, you shouldn't be coercing people into paying for things that some that you've agreed and you think is a good idea for everybody to have. It's not yes. your decision to make that. Yeah. So actually, an education system wouldn't exist. Government not would not be providing that. So government would be massively smaller, hugely reduced, and everything would be a, 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 just a competitive landscape out there. People providing um, education of all different types, and you could pick and choose. Uh, you can just provide your own children's education, maybe. Mm. But maybe that would be a good idea, is just to homeschool your kids, just keep them at home, and take personal responsibility for your children's education, which, by the way, as a teacher, I can say is 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 not a technical understanding. Yeah, it's a facilitating. Children want to learn naturally. Yes. Yeah. All you've got to do is is guide and provide 
Yeah. Absolutely, yes. And if you're put, forcing them down a route, I mean, I remember it from my schooling in certain lessons, you, you know, you just weren't interested in, um, I remember geography being particularly a lesson in which we all came in and the teacher was just telling us about crop rotation in Canada. And there was I in Sussex in England um, with a vague notion of farming, but not really. Oh, yes. That, extensive that, that farming. Yes. Yeah. Extensive yes. farming in another uh, yeah, country. I remember it well. <laughs> and, and she would just write stuff on the board and we just had to copy it down. I and mean, it was just for, you know, writing it that had no concept of what she was talking about. But actually, yes. I find farming very interesting now uh, as I've grown up. But as, as a whatever I was, 13 year old kid, um, I, if it had if they'd taken us to a farm, to explain how this worked, but it was under geography, so it had to be in another country. Well, I didn't even have an understanding of what it was like in this country, let alone in Canada, a country I'd yes. never been to. So it yes, was, it, yes, interesting. I mean, I used to, I love, I love geography, but the bits I loved mostly were actually physical geography about right. about the world itself. Yes. Know, about coastal erosion and rivers and all that. I love, love that kind of stuff. But when it came to human geography, I just thought, well, that's just learning about how how we screw it up really isn't it it's just... <laughs> yes absolutely so so uh, you know you can see that um in big institutions where you've got large numbers and class sizes are incredibly large at the moment and Massive, they're all yeah you know you've got one teacher and maybe a teaching assistant in there and they're trying to sort of deal with all these individual kids who yeah. come from individual families who have all their own little problems and stresses and strains and they're sitting in a room and a teacher is trying to give them this very strict curriculum of stuff yes. just to pass an exam and yet the, yeah, no, the, the, the skill set of the teachers in that situation is absolutely astounding yes I, I, honestly it you know and and i have taught in in the state system um a little bit but not as much as i should have done because i actually really enjoyed it but it's a massive challenge and the actual educational value that all of the pupils in that massive group are actually getting is, although good in certain situations and all credit to the teachers, it's nothing like the level it should be, no. really because of all the, of, of the disparity, um, the, the the problems that, that many of them are facing. Some of them are very, very capable. Some of them are a bit less capable, and yet they're all in the same group together, and the teachers have got to differentiate that. Um, it's it's just horrendous. It's a real massive problem, and they're doing an incredible job. Yes. In that situation. In that. In and that by the system. way, I would say that that's a very similar thing in the legal profession as well. There are a lot of um, of defence lawyers, solicitors, who are actually doing a, a really good job in a system that's basically kind of pretty close to bust. I would say, you know, because not only is it corrupt because of the constitutional law and all of that, but you know, a lot of the court buildings are falling apart and all kinds of things so this is not good news it's no. just not you know a centralized system like this kind of controlled by government is i don't think they could claim that that this is actually working really no <laughs> although i suppose the argument for the school system the way it is is they've got to have these set qualifications they go through these exams to measure the the ability of the children at a certain point or at certain points in their life so that then they can become employed in industry of some description or go on to further education so in the world that you've painted if people yeah. are, if people are sort of listening to you now and going oh my god what am i going to do with the children in in this world <laughs> and 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 how will they get work if i've got them at home and you know and they are sponges my sister did home ed and um, I w at the time, this was in the 90s, and at the time I thought she was fruitcake, but actually the kids are very intelligent. And afterwards we had a conversation about it and she said they are so interested in so many things because they just yes. ask questions and they keep asking. And if you're then able to ask them, but we didn't have a set curriculum. We, she just took them out and did things. But they did pass exams once they got to that sort of age. They, they had to sort of tailor to get through. And so they did pass and they're and they're all thriving, which is good to, to yes, know. Yes, indeed. I mean, a lot of homeschool kids, by the way, come out very grounded and very uh, capable and very emotionally and psychologically strong and stable because they're doing it for themselves. Yeah, they yes. haven't got this in this. I mean, school, you could argue that school is is a pretty toxic environment for a lot of kids. Yes. You know, some will thrive in that environment, you know, but but actually it's it's pretty toxic it's quite emotionally damaging it's quite psychologically damaging you're thrust together with people that you wouldn't naturally choose to be with 
And that's not, you know, that's okay to do that, but later on. Right. But the so, education that we're talking about is happening very early. And it's, yes. it's anyway, we're getting into into uh, an education debate there. But no, I'm, abs- all abs- I'm really saying yes. is, is that there, sh- there shouldn't really be that involvement, that central system. It really should be us taking responsibility for our children in a local environment where yeah. the children are at the most kind of just being in the village or the town close by. So uh, small, a small, you know. a bit like the old Victorian schools when they very first came in, you could send them in and they could be educated to whatever standard that that particular school would be offering. Yes. In the, yeah. And what fitted the needs of those kids. Yeah. Um, and so and, and so the point about the con- applying the Constitution, which, you know, you can't really apply it like that. Let's apply the Constitution tomorrow. You yeah. know, it doesn't work like that, you know. But it, but it really is about a mindset. It's changing society's mindset and understanding how the governance of our society, which is really the, the, the macro of our community, essentially, yeah. is actually meant to work. Um, and, if, and if we're changing that and we understand how governance is supposed to work, then everything else will change with it gradually. You know, I mean, and you get to a point where people will start pulling their, their kids out of school in such huge numbers. And, and, and that actually the, it'll just disappear, it'll just wither away. So a yes. lot of these things will just dissolve. So, so in other words, once people embrace it and they think actually we could do more of this ourselves, we don't need the big government, we can just get more involved in our local community and think for ourselves. Yes. Um, like yeah, with and health. Pe- people might say, you know, also, well, what about, what about kids that, that can't afford that education? Because you're going to have to pay in some sense. Mm. But you're already paying anyway through your taxes. Yes. And it's just an inefficiency. And doing it that way gives the government a reason to, 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 ha- to start that whole tax process. And, to, and, 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 and in fact, of course, they're quite good at hiding how that accountancy works and where all that money goes. So why don't we just keep hold of your money and decide more locally how you want to use it for your children's education? Yes. <clears throat> and indeed your health if you were doing if you were l- looking at the health service again that's as you mentioned it's a huge institution people get a bit worried oh what are you going to do with health and is it all going to be privatized but i suppose if you are giving the doctors doctors who who know their stuff a chance not to be so married to big pharma where the push is continually to sell these drugs or push yep. these drugs but actually say do you know what if you just eat a little bit healthier, uh, go and have an infusion of these herbs, get out more, uh, reduce your stress, you'll find your body actually um, does a lot better. Talk to the wise woman down down the road yes. type thing, you know, yes. those sort of things that we used to. Because we've, we have, we said it before, we've, we've, we've basically, we live, but we, everything about our lives, we just d- dissolve to somebody else to sort out for us including it's entertainment indeed. you know we all sit there looking at screens people watching this when you know people used to do so much more for themselves and and in a way that's what you're saying we should be much more uh, autonomous ourselves and and form these yes. sorts of groups it's, yes it's... And, and 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 in a sense enacting the constitution is about starting those change processes in society you know yes. this is not a big one I, sorry this is not a small thing it's a no. massive thing is what i'm saying Yes. It's, it, it's taking on the whole package. So if you're going to embrace your constitution, it is the solution to your to, to regaining your liberty and your freedom. But but it comes with a whole load of other stuff as well, which you've got, which is going to cause you to have to look deeply at yourselves and at society as well. And, yes. and that's good. So it's the real solution. It really is the real deal. There's no question about it. But you're going to get some uncomfortable stuff coming your way too when you embrace it. And if you are happy to go through that shadow and that the, the, the dark aspects and the truth that's inconvenient to look at, um, inconvenient truths. And by um, that, you're, you know, you're talking about taking responsibility uh, for, for your yeah. actions rather than, you know, if you, if you, if you and your neighbour, for example, your neighbour's playing loud music, and you might, you know, initially knock on the door and say, do you mind turning that down? And they say, oh, bog off. And you go, oh, well, in that case, I'm going to the council to sort of do it. And it sort of escalates into then it, it might end up in a court case, which is costing everybody lots of money and is a complete waste of time. Whereas I suppose if the other people in the street just sort of said, look, is it reasonable for you to do that? Is there a way that we can help you <coughs> mitigate all it? So you sort of take more responsibility for things that are going on 
Yes, and I think that that kind of behaviour becomes more difficult anyway. You can't you can't exhibit that kind of behaviour in a society that's becoming a bit more conscious anyway. A bit you like know, the that smoking. Kind of, that, a bit like the smoking. You know, that kind of self that sort of selfish behaviour where you're not really thinking about the people around you. Exactly. Tends to become a little bit more sticking out. Becomes yes. a little bit more obvious. You know, yes. you start start to look a, a, a bit of a twit actually, uh, because the general consensus around is starting to move more to a position of fairness and justice. Yeah. And so all of that consciousness is changing. And and that's where the Constitution is so good, because it actually, in a sense, provides us with those solutions to to do that. It, it creates scenarios that for us that actually require us to be more thinking of others. Yeah. Yes. So in, it's interesting and ironic that the Constitution is based on the principle of individual rights. But in being individual, when we actually engage with the collective among uh, with other people in, in society and engage with other groups, we are doing it voluntarily. And it's that voluntary action as an individual that causes us to have that much greater understanding of our society. It's individual rights that is the key here. That's what is underpinning the Constitution, in fact is that individual inalienable rights that you are born with. Yeah, and but but that doesn't mean you're selfish. It doesn't mean to say that you're just thinking of yourself. No. It means that you get to decide and volunteer to interact with other people. So the so people listening to this and I know from the last two episodes that we've recorded of course still feel they want that something something to do. And and this is, you know, and, and the other thing, of course, is how do you get the government to relinquish power? And as you've already alluded to, it, it sort of would happen over time. Yeah. So it's, it is that business of, of people talking about it and getting it buzzing in the conversation of everyone to to show that actually we could do this much more so that eventually... MPs, members of the, the government itself, starts to hear that actually people yes. want to take the responsibility. Yes, because remember that, that the people in government, those MPs, have family yes. and friends. They they are us, yes. and and we are them. I keep I, this is what I keep saying it, is that so at the moment our condition of enslavement, which is let's be let's be honest, that's essentially what it is, is happening not because of the government only. It's really happening because of all the people around us who haven't quite worked this out yet and are still supporting the status quo. Yes. Yeah. Said- so, so, so whilst the people around us are still kind of locked into that mindset, those of the relatively small number of us are not really going to be doing it, be able to achieve anything practically yet until we grow our numbers and we start changing the consciousness of the people around us. That's when things get very awkward and difficult for the other side, because in that environment, there are too many people talking about these concepts. Yes, absolutely. So um, if you've got in, in infringements and things, I mean, people are sort of already protesting about a lot of the surveillance that we're under and the cameras yeah. that are suddenly appearing at the uh, ATMs and the, uh, the self Check out. Self checkout. Yeah. You, you did that on the video the other day. I saw your. Yeah, your and you video sort of go, hang on a minute. You're, and they're still sort of grooming us for. So uh, why? Why don't? Why aren't people just you know take a cap in or a hat or a baseball cap, whatever you wear, and just stick it over the camera every yeah. time? Well, I and do. And if I everybody was doing over. that, it, yeah. you know. And the other thing, by the way, in the supermarkets is that we need to make a damn nuisance of ourselves. You know, I mean, I'm starting to go up to staff and saying, look, I want you to open another another checkout and I want to be served by you. I want to be served by a human being. And mm. one of the reasons for doing that is because I'm I'm trying to preserve your job. Absolutely, which you're going yeah. to lose, by the way, because all these machines are being set up prior to you, you guys, all losing your jobs. So th- Come on, abs- you need to work with us on this. Yes. You know? So again, but I've the- done that. I mean, I've been into supermarkets quite a lot and I've said this sort of thing. And sometimes I get really nice responses and the light bulb goes on and they think, oh, my God, you're right. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. You know, <laughs> and then we have a bit more of a chat about it whilst we've got the stuff going through the scanner, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, and sometimes I get really funny reactions and they just don't get it. But we really all should be doing that. We need to get people to 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 start to understand by actually being. And I know we're in a hurry sometimes and we just have to do it. But I hate those cameras. It's mm. awful going through those self checkouts with your with your face coming up. And as you suggested, it's not looking at your shopping. It's particular. not looking it's at your looking hands at your and your face. bags. It's, it's here, isn't it? It's like straight in front of you. Yeah. And, and so, and it so wouldn't maybe be so bad if well they just said cover that camera up and just yeah. get absolutely not having any of that kind of stuff. You it know. wouldn't be so bad if there was a sign saying we are experimenting with face recognition technology because at least people could go, oh my god, I don't like that, or yeah. they could avoid it completely. But when it's yes. underhand, you think there's no, you know, that's not that's just nasty. But yes, you're quite right. Um, it's that thing about, um, I remember reading a book, I can't remember who it was, I think Graham Harvey was an author, he said, we want real food. Um, and it came out in the 80s, I think, and he was talking about the advent of all this processed food. And he said, one of the, the problems is, is we don't complain enough in the supermarkets. Yeah. The supermarkets have become a thing where producers will supply and the supermarkets will provide what people have and the more that they the, the so-called choice that you have of all these wonderful colorful things and people are in a hurry so they grab all these things but if people said actually do you know what i want less of the processed stuff and i yes. want a bigger selection of raw ingredients and more wholesome ingredients when i shop and if people didn't buy the other stuff the supermarkets there to make money They'll provide yep. what the people really want, but the people need yep. to say it, and they, they don't. They need to say it and do it and not and buy it. it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it is in our power, and, we, and it's that whole thing about people en masse just doing it in a very small way but all over the place. So if you've got your, your chain of supermarkets and each manager is talking to the next manager of a supermarket and reporting in and saying, we've had an increase of everybody paying in cash. We've, people are just are lining up at the tills that are manned yeah. and not using <clears throat> the tills that are automatic. You know, that feeds back to the, to the, the pen, you know, the uh, financial manager is going, well, we're losing money then, aren't we? So we better bung in, we better get rid of those cameras and we better get rid of that and we better put in, yeah. you know, that, that's, to me, that's how it works. And I think that if we, if we take our service away from one service and, and, and we go somewhere else because of things like that, we mm. need to go back to the place where we would have gone and tell them that. Yeah. We need to go, go back in and tell the staff or the manager, say, look, I'm actually not shopping here anymore. Do you want to know not, why? Yeah. I just say, and maybe you should tell your boss that. Absolutely. And so, as you say, it then becomes such an organic thing, doesn't it? Because it's not one, you're not carrying a piece of paper and saying, my constitution says I should have the right to no. do it. You're just doing it. No, exactly. Your constitution, I mean, the word constitution, somebody said to me the other day, um, actually, it might have been, might have been Sandy, actually, who, right. you know, Sandy Adams, who you've had on. She said, problem is the word constitution is not very sexy, is it? You know, no. <laughs> and she's right. It isn't. No. But, but but that's not really what it's about in a sense you know no. we don't have to have um, our our rights and our um and our responsibilities and all of this this profound stuff that i'm trying to sort of expose and bring out mm. it's it's not it's not meant to be sexy anyway it's not you know that's not what it's about it's much more critical and important and profound than that it's it's, it's kind of a philosophy for life isn't it i mean we've yes. just we've just been allowing big governments to I mean, maybe it's it's an organic p process that we had to go through that we sort of just let them get on with it because it seemed easier, became more convenient and all of that. And now they're just thinking, well, technology can make us even more convenient. We'll just have one banking system. It'll be all like that. And we're trying to do our best for you because you don't seem to want to take any responsibility. So if we That's take it. back that responsibility and say, actually, do you know what? thank you for all those wonderful ideas but we don't want any of that rubbish that's We've... exactly it actually yeah. richard and 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 to be honest they they are playing on our weaknesses right yeah and, yeah. and this is and, and i promise you this is about psychological manipulation okay and you probably know that but it's all mm. about behavior nudging mm. you know i mean brian gerrish has talked about this on 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 uk column very eloquently in the past he's excellent on this it's all about psychological nudging mm. and 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 shifting um, the, the, the behavior of people within society and changing their perceptions. Yes. And, and really the people, the, 
the people, you know, people say to me, well, who is this right at the very top, you know? And of course, we don't really know. It gets a bit shady, all that stuff right at the very top. Mm. But what we do know for certain um, is that when um, when you look into the, the um, dark, um, ancient history, into esoteric information about who who these people are behind the scenes, really what they are is dark, ancient psychologists. And that's what they're good at. They're actually very good at psychological manipulation. Yes, yes. That's that's ultimately what it is. They 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 take advantage by by changing our behaviours and then swooping in and taking advantage of that and gradually incrementally um, taking control. Yes, because because we've weakened ourselves essentially, and 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 that's why it's really important that when you embrace your constitution, you understand and learn about natural law and some of the deeper principles that underpin it, because it is it it does go into subjects like. Um, how how we relate to the universe? What is the behaviour of man um, in at the psychological and emotional level? You know, and I'm not suggesting that everybody's going to get involved in this, but people who really grasp this constitutional stuff. I was at a talk last night down here, and my goodness, at the end, we just went on and on chatting at the end because some of these people really got it. They understood that this is a much bigger issue. This, yes, you know. So yes, we can deal with the light stuff. And there are things that we can do and we can change our behaviours and all the rest of it. But actually, some of you who are interested in this and, and realise the profound nature of it, you need to go deeper into this and study natural law as well and esoteric information, because it's all about our psychology as well and how we can be manipulated. Absolutely. Now, of course, just mentioning that, if I uh, let's have a look here, if I do this, I should be able to get to. Uh, no, not the Zoom meeting. Where, where is your? Here is your page. Here we go. Um, you've got your website, the New Chartist Movement at uh, newchartistmovement.org.uk, and uh, people can go there and read. And you've got this. Let me just show this up on the screen. Five steps to understanding the Constitution. Yeah, the, pla the place to go, Richard, actually, because the New Chartist Movement website. I'm going to be changing it actually quite soon because it's oh, quite okay. old. Right. Um, the place really to go is to is commonlawconstitution.org. Oh, I beg yours. I'm so that's, sorry. That's that's the place where the real consolidated information is for for oh, this lost... campaign. Yes. Um, okay. In fact, it's up there anyway as well. You're right. I mean, you have found it. It is that's a copy of it on the New Chartist Movement website as well, which is what cr creates confusion. Oh, uh, right. We've okay. got it in, in two places. But if you go to commonlawconstitution.org, um, that's the place where all of this material is absolutely consolidated right uh, in understanding right. what we're doing at the moment definitely i've just, I've just lost you hang on <laughs> trying to bring you back onto the screen <laughs> what have i do? oh here we go there we go sorry about this technology for you live on the show <laughs> uh there you go marvelous sorry about that um Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll leave the link in the description. I was in a rush to get it, and I thought, oh, I'll just put the website up so we can tell people where to go. The, this is so good. Um, I think the, the, the big takeaway for the majority of the people who are just so very eager to sort of feel that they can do something is, is just that sort of stuff that we've been talking about, the, you know, changing one's own thoughts, talking to as many people as possible about should we do this, and, and, and maybe forming little groups in which they go to the supermarkets and they say well look you know we want to we're all lining up here because we want to talk to a human um and spending more cash and all of those things but at yep. the same time beginning to understand and form um ideas and discussing the constitution and their rights and yes. natural law and and proliferating that online so it can be seen yes. by the powers Completely. yeah yeah, and, and, and the thing is, is that the, it's not just seen by the powers that be. What The people that really got to see it are your friends and relations around yes. you. Yes, yes. Because what you're really trying to do is to crack their calcified worldview. Yes. Meaning it's this, it's this kind of, what do you mean by calcified? It's this sort of fixated kind of worldview where you can't, you can't punch into it and get them to, to pull it apart and start to think, actually, you need to be a bit more malleable in this and start to question the contradictions in your thinking mm, and mm. until you do that they're not going to change they're not going to see it so what you've got to do is to expose in their own mind the fact that they have contradictions in their thinking inconsistencies yeah in one part of your life you believe this 
And in the other part of your life, you, you, in a different compartment of your thinking, you believe this. And the two are completely incompatible. They don't go together. And how do you do that? You, you, you put out memes. You put out things that actually cause them to, to kind of like short circuit and think, what the hell? And that has to go the other side. That's why I'm talking about social media and bombing the other side with some of these, these memes, because it's going to cause people to question quite fundamental things in their lives. Absolutely, yeah. No, and you've got some on your on on the website, but people can make up their own memes. You know, if people got... need to make up their own. Need to run yeah. with it. I can't do all of it. No, I'm no, getting, of course not. I'm getting emails in with people saying, "Well, can you provide this? Can you provide a sheet with step by step?" You know, no. Come on, guys. What I've done is the is the hard research. Well, I've, and other people have done the hard research. I've done a lot of aggregation of this information. Yes. And I'm and I'm presenting it in places. I'm I'm doing interviews and videos. I'm trying to get a little bit of interest going. You know, I can and, and I've got it sort of prepared in five steps on uh, on the website. You know, I have done quite a lot of that. Yes. But actually, those of you who do get it and you see the profound nature of this, you guys can repeat it and re-express it yourselves. Absolutely. Think of ways of doing it. Go and, go and design a T-shirt with some of those ideas on it and walk around. I and think be a little bit. I think sometimes people are, are frightened, aren't they, of getting it wrong because it's new to them and they think, oh, I don't want to, if I, if I create my own meme, I might make it just wrong or, you know, so there's that fear of putting something out socially and then everyone going, oh, that, that's a load of old rubbish, how do you back that up and all of that, which I, I know goes on. Yes, I mean, I think it's really important that people do um, read the material on the website and understand it. You know, everything that you need to know is on that website. And, and if you boil all of it down, as I did just at, at the mm. beginning, you know, the Constitution really boils down to the, into those three things. You know, it's a natural law tribunal in which the people can decide uh, on, on the accused. But at the same time, the boundaries of that acceptable behavior. That's quite easy. That's the first thing. The second thing is maybe you have a, um, a, a legislature of some sort where your admin government can create some statutes that are in alignment with those principles. They have to be in alignment with them. Great. And they're always tested before that tribunal. That's easy. And then the third thing is that you have a head of state who's basically a wise elder um, at the head of that community. It basically has, has promised in perpetuity to keep all of that in place. That's it. That's what your constitution boils down into. Into those three things. Into those yeah, three and, things. And, and it's, not, it's not a difficult thing, really, in a way, to understand. Go through the material on the website, download the occulted powers of the British Constitution, which is that longer statement longer, yeah. as well. Yeah. That's an important read. So, um, and I know some people you know, find reading easy and others don't. You know? and, and some people will find it a bit more challenging. But you know what? Reading hmm. um, comes from the word libre um, book in French or... Um, you know, and, and actually that 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 is the same root word for liberty. Ah. Yeah. So you obtain your liberty through reading. I re absolutely. Sorry, guys. So if you find reading difficult, there isn't really a way around that. You've got to do the reading. Yeah, it's, it's, also, it's a brilliant process it. because when you read your thinking, you know, sometimes if you have a, 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 an audio book, you can st have it on and you can drift away and not really hear it. But when you're actually having to read the words and, and go, hang on a minute, I didn't quite understand that. And you think it through. It really is. I mean, I love reading and it really solidifies yeah. those thoughts. It, I get this question. Um, I've had this question a couple of times now since we've done this. And uh, I, I, I know that they'd like me to ask you, can if you've got a court case coming up in front of a magistrate for whatever yeah. reason, yes. can you demand a trial by jury? Well, you can you, you can try it and you should say something. Definitely. Yeah. Now, uh, the way that I would phrase it probably is not so much that because it sounds a little bit stamping my foot and being a bit petulant. You know, <laughs> I demand a trial by jury, which which you could do and you're quite within your rights to say that. But. What I would tend to do probably is to say, well, and do it very politely and just say, look, with all due respect, I'm sorry, but actually the law demands that I have a trial by, of my peers. It's right. the law. It's the Constitution that requires it, actually. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and not only does the 1215 Magna Carta that's still binding on government require it, by the way, Article 39, but even even the statutory version of Magna Carta, which is not binding on them because they they in theory they could repeal it but interestingly the bit that's really our constitution 
in the 1297 statutory version of our of our Magna Carta is still in there. They haven't repealed it. I wonder why. Is that because, in fact, that is our constitution? They know they can't take it out. Ah. Yeah. So I think it's 29. I can't remember. But the equivalent piece in the Edward the First. 1297 the confirmatio cartarum which is the 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 one p the magna carta version that's in statute form created by parliament created by the king in those days that um that actually is the equivalent of article 39 and article 40 and that's still in their statutory law as well now i don't care whether it's in the statutory version or not because where the real authority comes from is actually the treaty the 1215 great charter that's the constitution but the very fact that it is in their statute law as well is a little bit embarrassing so mm. if you go into the magna it's okay go to magna go into go into the magistrates court and say that you know actually with all due respect i'm really sorry but i shouldn't be in here you know and, and nor should you be doing this either according to law i should be receiving a jury of my peers would you like me to quote the piece of law that actually <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you could have some fun with that, you know, but I mean, you've also got to be careful because, you know, they they don't res they don't understand the system doesn't understand. So you're not going to just get it. No, you know, they're, just, they're not going to just roll over. And, you know, but I suppose if people are asking, it's again, Absolutely. it's the feedback loop, isn't it? It's going back to, you know, in the chambers when they're talking. So we had a case where this bloke came up and he said he wanted to be a judge by his peers. The very yes. idea. Well, do you know what? I had that as well. And, you know, and it's all that sort of over yeah. time business. And it's, it's yeah, and if you do it nicely in that way. Yeah, you're very. You know, I mean, the mag don't forget. OK, so, so just pe people need to understand it, that you'll get like three magistrates probably there. And the magistrates are a, are, are a difference. Uh, they di they differ. Some, sometimes they are lay magistrate. They're people who are um, uh, they're, they're actually people that from the public, people mm. in the public who are um, basically volunteers. Um, but sometimes they'll put full full judges in there if there aren't enough. Yeah. So you're going to get a mix. Mm. But the real person with the power, if you like, is is the um, is the advisor, the legal advisor. Um, and, and they're the ones that sort of whisper in their ears about, you know, the legality of things and that, you know, and, and, and they are the people and you need to make friends with them a bit in court. Mm. Yeah. Don't don't try not to be belligerent and angry. Yeah. But because if you go into court in in actually in, create a little bit of a relationship with them, actually, and say, I'm sorry, guys, but actually, with all due respect, you know, perfectly well that this is, not right. you know, mm. you could have a very interesting time, I think, if you did it that way. Yeah. Yeah. We need to try and get rid of this sort of. And I understand why it's there, but this kind of belligerence and anger and petulance that's coming from the yes. freedom movement a bit, because it's making us look at sort of pretty idiotic, I think. And and it turns off the legal profession. They, they just think, oh, my God, you know, because they don't understand. Right. OK. So it's just, just, a, just a style thing, I think, that would make a difference. We said at the beginning of this we'd only do about 30 minutes, so it didn't uh, confuse people too much. 47 minutes later, uh, yes. <laughs> we've had to bring it to an end. Um, but it, this is something that we can keep coming back to and talking and reminding people. But uh, as you say, the stuff is on the website um, and it's the, the, just getting the conversation going with as many people as you can about what we should do and what our rights are and the constitution and the natural law and just sharing all of that as, as far as you can with all the memes and everything else and being a little bit disruptive to those systems that you want to change. If you're not happy, then we've got to vote with our feet and, yes. and make it meaningful And because anybody who's um, financially uh, worsened by your actions are going to change their policies um they won't if it's just one person but they will if it's en masse no exactly and one one last point richard actually mm. is that is the power really comes from doing it when we're not entangled with the system yeah right. so a lot of yeah. people have been trying to take action in these other processes and, and systems um which i've already talked about we don't need to go through that again mm. but they're only doing it when they're either in trouble or or they've got you know, angry about the council tax and all the rest of it. And, yes. and, and and that's fine to do that. But actually, the real power comes from when we're just actually just doing just it as a matter of course. We haven't we haven't got a beef with the with the government specifically, but we're just saying in, in really large numbers, you're, you're actually not acting lawfully. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, but you're a public servant. Yeah, you've taken an oath of office 
and what's going on with this, 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 and this, you know? And, yeah. and if they've got huge numbers of people doing that who aren't actually on the back foot because they haven't, they're not entangled with the courts already, that starts to change things a bit. That, that says a lot. Very well. William, always good to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and knowledge. Um, and it's really over to the, the audience now to sort of take it forward, take that bat on and, um, and share. I'll leave the links in the description, of course, but we better wind it up for now. But thank you very much, William. That was absolutely fantastic again. And hopefully people have got something more. Um, but uh, people can contact you through the website should they need to. Or it's yes, not really a good thing to through. say. Yeah. An email to me, and I'm a little bit behind on, on getting back to people. But um, Yeah, me too. I know what that's like. I'll, it's I'll, swamped. Uh, that's right, exactly. It's swamped. So don't expect a great, uh, huge uh, answer initially. But um, yeah. anyway, thank you very much, William. Uh, thank you very much to the audience. And um, I will be back again with uh, some more interesting interviews coming up. But until then, have a good day and bye for now. <laughs>